Hi everybody and welcome to another Tips and Tricks video. My name is Dan Lopez and I'm the Application Specialist for Tecla PowerFab. There is a great tool in Tecla PowerFab from the last version that can be utilized in different situations across the system. Uh, it just depends what type of a structure you build, uh, what access you have to buy materials, and how the project was detailed. And I'm talking about the splicing tool. And splices are something that structural fabricators in most of North America try to avoid just because they require normally a lot of labor, time from very well qualified welders, and, and then also a deep quality inspection, like you know welding ultrasound or radiographies. So usually it's just easier to have a little bit more of a scrap than a splicing. Although there are some cases where there's nothing you can do to avoid them, so you need to splice material. So for those cases, let me show you a couple of examples where Tecla APM can still help you to keep your trust of materials and keep control of your inventory. Now, let me give you a couple of examples because this can be handled in such a different ways. Just depends, you know, the normal company practices. I'll try to give you some of the most common scenarios. Uh, first, let me pull up here to the screen. There is requisition where I have uh, some beams and some HSS that I need to take care of. And let's let's analyze this first scenario. I have this HSS here. It's a small piece, a 14 feet, 11 inches, right? Uh, I use in, the, in this case, for example, I don't, I don't want to buy a piece of steel, but in my inventory, I know that I have a lot of drops that can come together with this long. So what I can do in this case is I can just right click this HSS, uh, create a new splice package from the selection. And this can be, I have seen this being commonly utilized like for bollards in a residential project, for example. So, so that's a very common scenario. I can go here and, and what you see here on the screen is on the right side, this is showing me the part that I had selected into the splice package. Uh, and then the left side is showing me every single part from the same shape and size that I have in other requisitions in case I wanna include those into this splice package. I don't wanna do that for now, but you know, uh, those of you that usually combine material from different projects, you know that this can be uh, a good way to do it. I'll just go with that specific part, that 14 feet piece. And then here I will go to the Add a Stock tab. Now you can see here, this is showing me a previews of all the different parts and lengths that I have in my inventory. If they are reserved for a job or not, you can see that in here. Uh, obviously they are not combined into pieces, otherwise they will not be showing up in here. Uh, now I have a bunch of 10, 10 feet and 11 inches, things like that. What I will do is just take this one I will include one of those four, so that just only will leave three in, in my inventory, as you can see. And I'm still missing a couple of feet there, like three or four feet. So I'll go to the top and then include one of these four feet, three inches pieces. And you can see that that will actually take care of that. So if I simply add this as a splice package, it will be saved as my splice package 107. And I can check all of those from the inventory at some point. I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. So let me just go ahead and click add. And since all those parts were part of my stock, what this will be, it's very similar to the normal combining process, right? It will actually take care of all this. And then those HSS will not show up in my requisition anymore, pretty much because, you know, they are already uh, reserved to a piece of my inventory. So I'll go ahead and close, and close this, this splice package. And there we go. So those HSS are not here anymore. Uh, now, in a second scenario, let me go ahead and take care of these 24 by 162 beams. Those are long beams. You can see that there are 87 feet, 4 inches, each one of those. Uh, I, there's no way that I can buy material that long, so I will need to make a splice. If, if that splice was not for some reason in the detail as a bolted splice or something, this case can happen. I will need to do a welding splice, and I can take care of that from here, or you know, to make it in a little bit different, I'll go ahead and do that from the inventory. I'll take a look and see if there is something there that uh, material available maybe that I can use for that. So let me just real quick go here to the inventory go to the material that I have with no reserve, no reserve for any job. And let me go to the wire flange dimension 24 by 162 real quick to see what is in my stock available. There we go. Uh, so this is what I have, uh, a few four feet uh, long pieces and then 137 and a couple of 42 feet long pieces. So I'll create my splice package from here. The same as in the requisition, I simply right-click that part, create a new splice package from the selection. 
This opens directly into the add stock this time because I'm doing it from the inventory. So you can see the parts that it's showing me here as a valuable and obviously by default it's including those two 42 feet parts that I had selected. Now here, if I click on the add parts, you can see that the two beams or the two marks that I had in that requisition are showing up and I can decide how do I wanna create this splice package. Now, what I think it's a realistic scenario is I will be going and included one of those I can go back to the add a stock and move out one of those 42s and you say, okay, I have already a 42 fit. I just need to, to take care of the rest of the material. Uh, you know, usually let's say I'll buy a 50 footer. So I don't have a 50 footer right now. I can from here take care of the purchasing process of all that. How do I do that is by going to the add and purchase material. Say I want to buy a 50 footer. Uh, it will be one of those at this that goes and creates that. And as you can see, I'm, I'm more than covered in that scenario. So I will be using one 50 footer and one 42 feet uh, that I had in rather, already in my stock. So when, when you are combining material that you have in stock and material that you have to buy, when you create this splice package, what this does is it will ask you, you know, if you want to put those materials into a requisition or a purchase order. So I'll do this. I'll just put this into the same requisition when, where right now I have the parts without combining. So I'll click OK. That's my first splice package. Uh, and then you see out of those two bars, I will be cutting those 87 foot, four inches. So uh, I can do that. I can do the same for the other piece, right? Simply just go and say uh, splice package. And, and just a comment here, and that's something that you can check with support. Uh, you can check your splice packages right here. You, I could have created the two different parts in, into a one splice package and spl split that in the future. So th there are a lot of different functionality attached to this. Just, just know that not enough to explain in a, a small tips and tricks video. Uh, so just to close this cycle, I'll just go ahead and sorry, right click and create a new splice package from this selection and take care of that other part that I had involved in there, right? So this other 87 feet, go back to my stock. I will be using that 42 and one more 50 footer that I will be buying uh, out of this. So include the same, add this, add save my splice package and saving that into the same requisition so I can continue my normal purchasing process for those materials. All right, so now let me close the inventory, go back here to the requisition and just to kind of close the point in there, if I scroll down, you see I have those two 50 footers that I still need to buy and the status for those is SP, that stands for a splice package, and I can see which parts I will be cutting out of those. Those 87 that obviously are combined with the 40 feet pieces that I also have in my stock. So really, just to finish the cycle, I will just go ahead and select those, uh, come over here to my drop-down menu, and send them to a purchase order, which is, uh, you know, where you will continue the process and receive that material, and then you'll be able to process those into a cutlass. And for the purpose of this DVD, I'll just include them in a random purchase order. But you know, you usually will go through the normal purchasing process. Now, one option that I want to show you is that you have the tools to join the bars in the inventory to process that in your cutlass, right? You can process the Once you receive all the material, like the parts that are in your stock and the parts that are coming in a purchase order, you can process them through a cutlass. In a normal scenario, I'll, I'll show you that in a moment, but you can also join the bars. Uh, let me show you this. If I go through maintenance, inventory, and going up in my splice packages, I'll just go ahead and, and find the one that I created a moment ago from here. It's this one right here. Uh, I can pull the details of that splice package. If you remember, it's the 14 feet part that I'm cutting out of these two pieces from my stock. Uh, I can represent this in this way on the, on, the, on the cut list, but I can also simply join the result link. And what that will be doing is creating in my stock a 14, you know, the total of this length, 15 foot, two inches and a quarter bar in my length, in my stock. And that's what I will be re representing in my actual cut list. So if you usually, you know, pre-weld the inventory before you actually generate the piece, this is the way to go. I can simply join the result link that will be then one part only in my inventory. Uh, I can go ahead and, oh, sorry, I, I didn't include this. Include this, the parts obviously that I am cutting out of this in the stock, I'm joining both of those and simply join this and that will create a splice package for those, those parts. So if I go to 
that production control job, which I believe is this one right here. Let me just open the whole job. And let me go ahead and do the, the same process like if I will be creating a cut list for this. Uh, this will be a new one. I'll do it only to show you this in an easier way. Only for the HSS, I think is the only thing that I have combined. Let me just make sure. Yep, that's it. Uh, make my report. The way that this will be represented in the cut list, it's as a 15 footer bar, right? Because what I did is I joined that splice package. So instead of uh, a 10 and a four feet something, it's a 15 footer, two inches and a quarter that I will be using to cut this bar. In a different scenario, let me now go back and open the other production control job uh, where I have those uh, 24 by 162 parts, right? So if I go to production control, uh, open that job, when I create my actual cut list, it will be displayed in the way that I have organized these, right? That's a, two different parts. Uh, be coming together to, to cut that 87 feet. So if I show you that example, let me go and create a new cut list. Again, I think that's the only material that I have combined at this, in this project for now. So if I pull the same report that I showed you a moment ago, it's represented in this way, where it says, uh, it will be a total of 92 feet, 11 inches, 5 16 But you can see that those are coming from a 42 feet, 11 inches, 5 16 that it's in your stock, and a 50 footer that it's on order, still to this point. And that's the part that you will be cutting out of that. So that's showing you all the information for each one of those two bars. So either way, when you process those, you'll be able to keep the traceability, select the, the heat numbers that you are using for both of those parts. Uh, even the drop, that you, if there is a restock, like in this case, you will be able to say if it's a restock of this heat number for the piece in your stock or for the 50 footer that you receive. So you have all that traceability information in the background as well. So let us know if you need something in a specific that will fulfill your application. If you have questions, we are always happy to discuss how you can uh, implement the splicing tool into your process. Uh, help desk area can help you with all that. Uh, now, before I finish the video, uh, I just want to make a comment like, in contrast to North America, Mexico and Latin America and some of the regions of Middle East, they have to deal with the splices in a very different way, right? They, it's a normal day-to-day -day operation for them because different reasons. The access to the lengths of bars is not as variable as in U.S. and Canada, right? Sometimes they, they can only have access to 40-feet bars or 50-footer bars, things like that. Uh, so the splicing tool for them uh, provide also a more si simplistic way to use and, and still have the relation to their materials, right? And let them know what they need to buy. They don't have to worry about all these different combining results. So just wanted to make a comment there in case this can be helpful for some of you be seeing the videos in some of those regions. Uh, if I go to that requisition that I have open at the beginning, uh, let me just show you a, a scenario real quick. Uh, if you remember, I had all those 18 by 35s and then the 14 by 109s bits here at the bottom. If I want to just buy all the material for those ma for those parts, and I know that the only material that I can buy is 40 feet, for, ex for example, which will be the 12 meter beams, in those regions, I can just select all this material, uh, create a new splice package from the selection, and the material will go ahead and show me first the 18 by 35s. As you can see, it's by shape and size. It shows me the parts that I have included. I'll just go with those. And when I go to the stock, I can still use pieces from my stock. But I don't want to jump into this for now. What I will do here is include unpurchased material. Say I can buy 40 footers. And this tells me that I will need to buy 60 footers to take care of all those links that I need to do. So I can just include that, say, add this splice package. It will ask me where do I want to put this material. I will include that into the same requisition that I'm working on right now. And then it will go ahead and show me the 14 by 109, which it was the other size that I had in there. I'll do the same thing. I will go to the to this area. I can obviously combine, right, as, as I did before. I can add a 48 footer that I have in my stock, for example and then simply go and say, all right, and then I can also buy 40 footers. And this tells me, okay, it's gonna be four more. So I can do something like that, add this material, same requisition, click okay. And as you can see now, my requisition shows those two splice packages and I can go ahead and create my order. So uh, if you are in another region, you can also consult with your help desk area to see how this can help you with your control of materials. 
Uh, hopefully this is clear. It's a complicated topic, as I mentioned at the beginning, but we are always here to help. And as always, thank you for watching.